Ohm Brothers. The title of this video is that MIPS is not pleasurable. And at the KBH we use the word MIPS instead of the word sex. MIPS means mucosally induced prostatic spasms. That should be graphic and accurate enough for you. MIPS, all caps. And uh, if people were having sex, really, our population in the world would be several gazillions, so it's impossible. When people talk about having a quote-unquote sex life, it's impossible. They're not doing anything. They're not creating anything. They're not putting their seeds in the ground with water so the plants grow, but rather simply flushing them down the toilet in every disgusting and uh, unspeakable method imaginable. And this is not what we would call you know, intercourse. So you know, intercourse proper I is something uh, separate. Uh, but there is part of the experience which is the same, and that is what we call the death spasm. The death spasm is a piece of brain candy that the body gives you in order to cover up your pain, to cover up your your regret and to cover up a lot of other things, cover up your sense of danger. These things are all all checkable on the internet. For example, brain surgeons have seen how when somebody is engaged in that practice that the 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 danger center of the the brain, the alarm, just completely shuts off. In other words, if at that point somebody were to you know, pull out a gun or, you know, start a fire or something, um, presumably the couple will just keep going because they seriously don't have uh, any fear of anything, um, especially fear of very real things like, you know, killing, you know, there's this you know, half-formed infants and human life that is found in the vibrant and precious male creative fluid. Uh, another part that is really not enjoyable about MIPS is the whole concept of a quote-unquote relationship. I mean, one of the big reasons I became a celibate is because I don't want to hear the yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear the, the constant, you know, oh, my feelings, or let's sit down and talk about my feelings, or uh, do you like my skirt, or uh, the, all these other kinds of weird things that women will throw at you and because women are um, in general they're less conscious than most men they're less logical than most men you're not really going to get into the female mind or let's say the female inner relationships mind through uh, any kind of a logical process or a reasoning process and what this does is it puts an enormous psychological burden on you uh, the minute you start. And the death spasm is addictive and it is, it is uh, completely identical in brain chemistry to a heroin rush. This was proven by Gert Holstege. And these, the first experience that you would have, for example, you know, like a, um, a mushy kiss or, you know, petting or these other things that are, that are sexual, your actual first reaction, if you can remember, <laughs> uh, is nausea. You're actually not feeling good when it happens. And you're probably doing it because of some sort of peer pressure or some idea that you should do it. In my generation, it was because we were all watching, like, Growing Pains and, you know, Bill Cosby and all these really dumb things on TV that were telling us that to be normal, we have to, quote-unquote, like women. Actually, I mean, doing that to a woman is hating her. It's not respecting her at all. It's a kind of a rape. I mean, I'll agree with these, you know, weird Jewish, you know, feminazi, whatever you call them. <laughs> you know, they call the act uh, itself a kind of a rape. It's, but it's a rape of everybody. It's, it rapes the man as well. It's, it rips out um, a huge part of his guts, which is, you know, hemorrhaging. And it doesn't cost nothing to get that uh, roller, co roller coaster ride and that big wee, you know, your death spasm. And that wee is just like you're on coke or something. 
And the first time you do these things, do you remember the first time you had a beer, the first time you had a cigarette, or the first time you tried anything addictive, if you ever tried those things? It always, it always causes a kind of a nausea, and you force yourself over the nausea. How does that happen? Well, you just keep doing that thing until the addictive behavior and the rush starts to cover over your fear and your pain and your nausea until you until you start it becomes an addiction and the way we define addiction is when somebody is hurting themselves and they want to hurt themselves and the the pain and nausea of of the things they're doing to themselves they can't feel it they don't they can't feel what's going on to them and it's like our smokers can't see their black lungs you know filled with um, tar and stuff that's for smokers who smoke it in and who are you know constantly smoking cigarettes and stuff they they have a unbelievably filthy uh, body it, the stink and the wretch comes out on their feet and their armpits their sweat uh, all their clothes and the the beards turn yellow their fingers turn yellow the it's really really disgusting and they can't smell it they can't you know they can't really they can't really feel like well this is what I'm doing to myself and that's sort of what's ridiculous about terminal cancers, terminal conditions of the respiratory tract and the heart. Uh, typically, Asians have more of a reaction in the heart uh, because the the water qualities they have. But the how could you have such an extreme, an extreme you know physical condition? How many physical conditions were you ignoring up to that point? Because for me, when I even feel a little bit strange, uh, I, I'll just adjust what I'm eating, adjust what I'm doing, and then I don't get sick. But uh, I think a lot of these people cannot feel their own bodies. They can't feel what's actually happening to them. Now, finally, I mean, we have to draw the line also that once we've understood that the death spasm is addictive, then then we we understand that yes we we were nauseous or we felt bad when it first happened you know watching your first porno tape or things like that was like a kind of being raped and it's what what these uh directors and what these mafia people and they are mafia people who produced this por porno films um they they're they're raping us and they're 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 stabbing us with these steely knives and they're ripping out our guts and you can really really feel it and so for any brothers who have had the experience and who are not virginal or who have gotten themselves into addictions before remember that first step remember the nausea remember the pain and it's a, it's good to remind you of what you're really getting into um Another really important point that it's not pleasurable is that the body itself is a fairly ugly thing, uh, and it's if you really really want to worship a body, you know, please go to YouTube videos uh, where they show dissections. Um, I've seen also the breast implant uh, videos. There's all kinds of surgeries. There's a meat-eating bodybuilder who gets 10 pounds of worms pulled out of his stomach you know and people typically would post pictures of this bodybuilder on their wall and say oh he's really awesome he looks really huge he's Schwarzenegger or he he's the body and you know, you've got to watch what's in his gut too you have to see what's on the inside you have to see the whole picture you know don't just sit there and think about gourmet food all day and then just ignore the poop you know because with with food there's poop and with you know MIPS there's this whole other thing that comes along with it and it's not all that unsimilar to poop you know the holes at the end of a woman one one hole you know puts out the poop the other hole puts out a poop machine and um, you know even her householder brothers told me you know after they have a kid like well I, I really envy you because just the pure stink of the poop coming out of the baby and you know with the boy babies you know they 
they might pee in your face when you're you're trying to change the diaper and stuff, and the constant crying, and then sort of being cute and saying "Daddy, I love you" to make up for it, and then this bittersweet love that the parents feel. You know, it's probably better just to avoid it altogether. Um, and then if you then decide to have a death spasm, you might as well make a kid. I mean, that's our position at the KBH. You know, why would you go through this nya 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 with a woman and 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 be put under that all that bean counting and all this other stuff? Uh, this enormous mental, you know, uh, burden, and then and then have nothing to show for it. You don't even have a family. That would lead to a next video, which would condemn, uh, which would condemn the uh, misandry. And we say male misandrists are what people call homosexuals. Uh, they're they're committing a crime that's further down the line. That's worse because as they as a habit waste their seed and they have no concept of you know the way things should be naturally and the design of the world and how we go with that as opposed to trying to block that so how does celibacy and the the brotherhood fit into this knowledge that MIPS is not pleasurable well the position of celibacy is not ascetic it's it's not ascetic it's not it's not pain <laughs> i'm not in pain because i'm celibate mm -hmm. and the way we see celibacy is the middle path brothers because yes nature is going to put pressure on you to reproduce reproduce but even beyond that there's so much propaganda in the world that that goes you know many times beyond what nature is giving you you know wolves are natural and still most of them will not household so what human beings are doing is beyond natural and the, the number of humans who are householding is beyond the natural number and um, to be a celibate we're just saying no we're not saying well I'm going to torture myself or sleep on a bed of nails or you know burn my skin or do these other things or let Corpus Christi walk around with thorns in my leg or you know thorns in my shoes and stuff like that we're not torturing ourselves. We're just saying, no, you know, I just want to live life. I want to enjoy life. And I don't want all these complications. I enjoy working and uh, praying and, and having uh, a space to myself. Like, how do you sleep with somebody in your bed? I mean, even that, you know, you might say there's a sort of a comfort, like having a kitty on your lap for a little bit of time, but there's constant disruption and uh, we have a Catholic priest friend on YouTube here, uh, Sonny, and, and he mentioned that. To him, the biggest deal about celibacy is just he doesn't want somebody in his bed, you know, rolling around and waking them up and, you know, doing these things. It's, it's like my bed is my bed, and uh, I want I want to have a good, solid sleep, and um, I enjoy being alone most of the time, and when we're together with the, with the brothers, we're... We're happy. Well, looks like my light is cutting out because it's just so bright in here. Uh, that's Prabhupada on the wall. And Jai Prabhupada, Hare Krishna, everybody. And Om. Your regret and to cover up a lot of other things, cover up your sense of danger. These things are all, all checkable on the internet. For example, brain surgeons have seen how when somebody is engaged in that practice that the, the the danger center of the the brain the alarm just completely shuts off in other words if at that point somebody were to you know pull out a gun or you know start a fire or something um, presumably the couple would just keep going because they seriously don't have uh, any fear of anything um, especially fear of very real things like you know, killing, you know, there's this you know, half-formed infants and human life that is found in the vibrant and precious male because it's not what we would call, you know, intercourse. So, you know, intercourse proper is, is something uh, separate. Uh, but there is part of the experience which is the same, and that is what we call the death spasm. 
The death spasm is a piece of brain candy that the body gives you in order to cover up your pain, to cover up your... The, our population in the world would be several gazillions, so it's impossible. When people talk about having a quote-unquote sex life, it's impossible. They're not doing anything. They're not creating anything. They're not putting their seeds in the ground with water so the plants grow, but rather simply flushing them down the toilet in every disgusting and uh, unspeakable method imaginable. And this home brothers the title of this video is that MIPS is not pleasurable and at the KBH we use the word MIPS instead of the word sex MIPS means mucosally induced prostatic spasms that should be graphic and accurate enough for you MIPS all caps and uh, if people were having sex really